to now we're going to hit the number 17 team. And that is the Clemson Tigers, still coached by Dabo Sweeney. Guys, if you haven't listened to the podcast, you guys know how I feel about Dabo. Uh, DJ Ungale, now we can finally say his name right. He's gone. Transfer. Bye-bye. Cade Klubinek is the starter now. And we'll see what how, how things go for him because he played in that bowl game and did not look very good and looked a little, little rough. Will Shipley is back for them. Uh, really, really good running back. But, and you take a look at Jeremiah Trotter Jr., one of the best defenders in the country. But this – what what's up with Clemson, man? Like, I'm I'm I don't want to take too much joy. I don't want to take too much of a victory lap and be like, you know, I'll, I'll hurt myself if I pat myself on the back so far. But Clemson is is falling like a Tom Petty song right now. They're, wow, they're, that, was, that was really good. Yeah, they're they're free falling all day long. They are. They're in a, a massive free fall because you take a look at what they've gone through. They're they're no longer. I mean, really, would you say that they are a college football playoff contender? Well, I think the record gets them there, but who they play and how they are is a completely different story. Um, they're a shell of what they were in the in, in early on. And under Trevor Lawrence and Deshaun Watson, they are a shell of that program. No, fear. I think fear is probably the best way to put it. Nobody fears Clemson anymore. Teams actually, you know, they had beat Alabama. They had shown their proof. They had actually beaten some good Florida State teams at times. They had beaten a highly ranked Notre Dame team. People actually feared Clemson for a little bit of there. Nobody fears Clemson anymore. And you kind of the real the real reason it was perfect. The last three games of the season right now, last year, show it. You hosted South Carolina, a team that was coming off a massive win over Tennessee. Maybe kind of thought, all right, they're going to be so hyped over that win. It's still South Carolina. When they come back down, we'll get them. They walked into your house and they beat you. You lost at home. When you still actually technically had life to get into the college football playoff because the way the, the fourth team situation was a mess, they could have snuck in and you lost to South Carolina. You go to the ACC title game, you blow out North Carolina, whatever. And then you get your bowl game. You have your new quarterback. We're going to put in Cade Klubnik. We're going to run out there with everybody. Breezy played. All, all the guys played. Well, they, they were they were dressed for the football game because Tennessee beat the trash out of them. Um, what did that say to the program? Where two teams that are very close – whooped your tail in the last two through two, two of the last three games of the year. That shows that right there, Dabo has – the guys aren't showing up, the talent level across the board isn't there, and nobody fears them anymore when you're getting thrown around like they were in the last few games of the season. Since 2019, they're 10-6 and six versus top 25 teams. All right, you know, that's four years. That's winning some football games. They have nine total losses since 2019, but six of them are the past two years. These past two years, 20, uh, 21 and 22, they're getting beat around. And people are starting to beat them up, beat up on Clemson. They're starting to survive games. They survived Syracuse last year. There's still controversy on that one itself. This team is not who they used to be. And now you're running Kate Klubman got there. He's supposed to be this five-star stud. Didn't look very good during the season. Looked terrible in the bowl game. How is he going to be able to survive with – I'm not going to say it right now. They don't have the offensive weapons around him either that really scare me. Will Shipley in two years has been a guy. He has not been the superstar that everyone played him out to be. He was going to come out there and go for, you know, be a, a Christian McCaffrey type. He hasn't done that. He couldn't stay on the field his freshman year. He was bigged up here and there. Last year, he, did, he was okay. He was, he was a guy. But he's not the superstar that I'm talking about. Like, all right, you know, that's first team all ACC. That's second team all American, hands down. He's not helping him. They don't have the receivers that are, you know, the Sammy Watkins of the world aren't showing up and, and playing for these guys. Um, they don't have the Clemson receivers that scare you anymore. Like, this offense is not who it was. And that's the thing on Dabo. Who are you actually recruiting? How are you developing these players? These guys are showing up, and they're actually regressing. We're not even seeing the field. That's a problem. Defense is still strong. Recruiting is still strong because this week they had a couple more five. Oh, this time period around the year, they had a couple more five-star players commit to them. Um, they're still getting the elite guys, but what's happening once they're showing up on campus now? Are they actually developing these players? Because they're they're getting a top ten class every year, but they're not showing up and playing at the elite national level. They should. You mentioned Jeremiah Trotter Jr., also has Barrett Carter. I think the two of them are this year are going to be studs. Um, but what can they do? Because the defense is theirs now. Miles Murphy's gone. Breezy's gone. How do they embrace the role of their leaders of the defense? What do they mold that defense like? Do they take charge and become leaders and push them to be a little bit better? Do they 
hold the rest of the team accountable? Are they the true team captains? Do they go to Kate Klubman and say, hey, this is our team. We're in charge. That's what Clemson needs. They need somebody to get in that locker room and actually be a vocal leader, challenge the rest of them. Look, you're, if you're being a four-star, five-star player, for the majority, you're going to have some talent. You can be able to play. And at some point, if the coaches are holding you back, you as players got to hold yourself accountable. There's Miami teams back in the day that the coaches didn't even have to be there. The players would go out there and they coach themselves, they police themselves, and they would go out and win football games. The great programs, USC has done the same thing. And you, know, you hear the stories where the players hold each other accountable. At some point, Clemson's players got to hold themselves accountable because Dabo, you've let your team down. You might have that you know, nice smile. You talk to the parents. You have all the facilities to get the recruits. But you guys haven't shown me that you're Clemson football lately. This comes down to the players. Which one of you guys hold each other accountable? How do you show up on game day? Your schedule, you're going to get a rude awakening this year. Last year, you had a lot of turnovers on offense. You had 22 turnovers. You cannot be – that's not sustainable. And that goes back to holding each other accountable, of protecting the football, not throwing interceptions. What are you doing to help your team win a football game? The schedule. You can be 3-0 when Florida State arrives. And this is not just a Florida State team. This is a very good Florida State team that we think is going to come in with a lot of firepower and really challenge you in Death Valley. This is going to be a big-time football game. I got a feeling it's going to be an 8 o'clock kickoff on ESPN or ABC or whatever. The place is going to be rocking. It's great during kickoff. Like we talk about Lane Stadium, opening kickoff, and everyone's there, you know, jumping around, getting fired up, and touch the rock, run down the hill, whatever. Will the crowd be in the football game in the second half when you need them most? Or are you guys actually going to keep your team there? That's what you want. You want the big games there at Clemson. You need to start showing up on paper and on the field at the same time. At Syracuse, Wake Forest, at Miami, they look easy, but you struggled in some of those situations where you had to go overtime to beat Wake. You had you know, Syracuse last year and you struggled. You can't let these games, those games that are winnable escape you because the elite level of you supposed to be there and playing Florida State, you might get two matchups with them this year. You've got to show up and be ready because playoff spots before they expand are still very, very limited. And if you want to show your back, you've got to win every single football game and prove you're there. Four of the last five is really where this team is going to be tested. How can you, healthy can you be coming down the stretch? At NC State, Notre Dame, Georgia Tech, North Carolina, at South Carolina. How do you finish this season and build momentum into a potential ACC title game, into a potential college football playoff spot? Where is this football program going? That falls on Dabo. That falls on the team holding each other accountable. And that shows actually being feared. Are you going to be feared in November? And can you actually live up to the billing? I think the ceiling for this football team is 11-1. Obviously, it's ACC. And there's, we've mentioned North Carolina. They're beatable, et cetera, et cetera. The floor is 7-5. and five. Because Kate Klubnik and that offense, I don't know what we're going to get from them. That offense might actually hold this team back, and more turnovers like last year would result in more losses. Um, ACC will find ways to beat them with Notre Dame on the schedule, with Florida State on the schedule. They could be 11 and 1, they could be 7 and 5, but can this team hold each other accountable is really going to be the difference maker in where they're going to be sitting at the end of the year. Fresh, there's a couple. Before I go on what I don't like about Clemson here, you know, Shipley's got 26 touchdowns in his two years playing there. He is a solid running back over a 1,000-yard season, but then he only had five games last year where he crossed the 100-yard mark. You take a look at sophomore Antonio Williams. He is looking like the next really good Clemson wide receiver. It's going to come down to him and Klubinek creating that connection between the two of them. Bo Collins is another name that everyone's going to talk about coming in for Clemson this season. Uh, that 6'3 sophomore, is he going to be the, you know, the red zone target where I can throw a, a back corner fade and he jumps up and goes, gets the football for me. It, you're going to need all these guys to take away the questions. It's going to take away the what ifs. What if this guy, you know, and the thing that scares me with Clemson is offensively with their weapons. And I still think their defense is going to be pretty solid all season long. It, it, it's a good, it's a really, really good defense, even with the talent that they lost. This offense can't sustain an injury. You can't sustain an injury to Klubinek. You can't sustain an injury to Shipley. You can't sustain an injury to Bo Collins or Antonio Williams. You have to stay, just like you're saying, how healthy are you at the end of the season? Clemson has to stay healthy this season. They're not going to have a shot at any of this. We're going to know how good this Clemson team is very early on week four when Florida State comes into town. And then you take a look, though. 
even if you win that game, what's the one place that Clemson always struggles to play at? Syracuse. Syracuse. And they go the next week to Syracuse to play in the Dome. Folks, I'm telling you right now, for some reason or another, Clemson always struggles with Syracuse. It's kind of goofy, but it is what it is. Well, note on that, the last 10 years, six games have been decided by single digits in that right in that matchup. That's And that's going to be huge for them. I, I think you're going to be able to easily take apart Wake Forest and Miami. We'll see about N- NC State, but Notre Dame's going to be taking a look at Notre Dame. They're going to be looking, if especially if they lose to Ohio State early in the season, they're going to look for that marquee win to kind of vault them back into the playoff conversation. And and they could get that very easily by coming down into South Carolina and win over them. If if this offense doesn't stay healthy here fresh, I don't know. I, I, I'm with you. I still see seven uh, a pathway to seven wins for them because the ACC is the ACC. And it's not a a murderer's row of schedule here, you know. I think they got. I think they'll take out Duke, Charleston, Southern Florida Atlantic, Wake Forest, Miami, Georgia Tech. There's six right there, and you just got to win one more. Um, I have their their floor at seven, and I'll say their ceiling is eleven. I think they either slip up against Florida State, Notre Dame, or South Carolina along the way. I mean, and from a road standpoint, their their hardest trip is the last game of the year to, to uh, down to down to South Carolina in yeah. Williams Bryce Stadium. Um, I don't really think Carter Finley. I mean, at night it might be a little bit different, but Carter Finley is not as intimidating. So their road trips aren't hard. Uh, this is going to be, you know, it's there for them if they play up their potential. If not, then they are truly they're just a mediocre program. Yeah, and and we have officially seen the downfall of of Clemson and, and they're hanging there of being like, are you still an elite level program or are you now at the point where, yeah, you're really good, but you're not elite. Yep. So, all right, fresh. 